As we can see, getting good reliability is all about having a really small lambda. If you want to improve your lambda, there's some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that a lambda of once per million hours is not unusual for an electronic component. And the even worse news is that if you have a life critical system, you have to do a lot better than one failure per million hours for almost any application. The origins of figuring out how to solve this dilemma go back to World War II. V2 rockets were very large, very complicated, and had a high failure rate, meaning that they tended to explode in flight. For a while, the approach was, after each flight, figure out which component failed and make that component stronger. That helped a little, but rockets kept blowing up all the same. Eventually, a mathematical formulation of the situation revealed that making an individual component better would never result in a very high reliability. This concept is called serial reliability. While complex systems may have tens or hundreds or thousands of components, we're just going to consider three components to illustrate the concept. This diagram shows the idea that if any of the three components in the system fails, the whole system will fail because the line from left to right will be broken. In other words, all three components have to work for the system to work. The problem with this approach is that even if you get really good components, you can't get ultra-high reliability from a probability point of view. For your system to work, you have to get lucky, and all three of the components have to work. In mathematical form, this is a probability equation by saying that component 1 has to work and component 2 has to work and component 3 has to work. So that means multiplying the reliability for all three components to get the system reliability. Reliability numbers are probabilities less than 1, and when you multiply numbers less than 1 together, the result gets smaller instead of bigger. So even if your components are really quite good, by the time you multiply together a bunch of 0.9 somethings, you're going to get a relatively small number for a big, complicated system. As a simple, concrete example, consider if you have three components that are 90% reliable. Multiplying them together gives you a system that is only 73% reliable. That's a problem. The solution to this is using parallel reliability. The idea is to use redundant components to improve reliability by arranging things so that you only need one of several components to work for the system to still be okay. This diagram shows three components and indicates that any one of the components is enough for the system to be working because there's a path that works provided from input to output. It's really unlikely that all three components will fail at the same time, even if one or two of the components is relatively unreliable. With probability math, this computation is done in terms of the unreliability, where unreliability is 1 minus R of t. We start by taking the unreliability of the three components, meaning that the first component has to fail, and then multiply it by the next component having to fail, and then multiply it by the third component having to fail. That gives us the unreliability of the system, so we subtract it from 1 to get the reliability. With this math, things are working in our favor, because even with relatively low reliability, once you have a lot of components, you can have an extremely reliable system at the high level. As a simple example, if you have three components that are 90% reliable, putting them in parallel gives you a system reliability of about 99.9%. .9%. That's a lot better, and that's how you can build airplanes that fail once every billion hours even though the components in the airplanes might fail once every 100,000 hours or once every million hours. There is an important condition here. This is not a free lunch. While you've improved system reliability, you've added twice or three times as many components. Those all cost money, they all have weight, and they're all going to break. So you might need to make repairs to your system two or three times as often because there are two or three times as many things to break. But the good news and the reason you do this is you can get extremely high levels of reliability with only a moderate amount of redundancy by using the parallel reliability equation.